welcome to Hermetic Journeys. I'm your host, Tony G. That's me. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. It's good to see you. Um, this is a very brief video concerning the previous video, which was Egypt Part 3 in my four-part series on my trip to Egypt. It specifically dealt with the Temple of Luxor. Uh, and, and Part 4 is forthcoming. It'll be the next video. It's going to be a big one because I've been working on this for months. It's, it's really, really complex and very deeply uh, symbolic, of course. And so that the next video will deeply explore uh, Ari Shwala de Lubitsch's uh, symbolist theory and how it evolved through the Temple of Luxor. Meanwhile, if you recall, in my previous video, we looked at several things, but one of the things we looked at um, was specifically was the acacia tree and its possible use in ancient Egyptian ritual ceremonies. Specifically, there is a goddess of the acacia tree, it's typically Ayusaset, but I also, through further research, discovered that Hathor and Isis were used as well. I guess depending on who was the more popular goddess in ancient Egyptian history, that was the goddess that became the goddess of the acacia tree, which makes sense, right? We explored my theory concerning the entheogenic properties of the acacia tree and its use in Egyptian ceremonies. And I sent this video, it's, this is, the, this is the, the coolest thing. The synchronicities involved in my studies sometimes just absolutely stagger me. I, they're just unbelievable, okay? Um, so I sent the video uh, to my, our dear friend, Steve Kalick, an alchemist, of course, and to my surprise and absolute delight and shock, really, Steve informed me that he had taken the bark of the acacia tree and created something called the Stone of Antiquity in his alchemical lab. He partook of this elixir um, in a spiritual exploration of consciousness. Mind officially alone. <laughs> okay, in his words, I am being daring to reveal a spiritual journey I experienced due to my alchemical preparation of the Stone of Antiquity. This is an ancient Egyptian process and is a technique older than the first Egyptian dynasty. That's really old, folks. The Osirian myth greatly reveals the secret as acacia trees grew and flourished around the grave of Osiris, thus the spirit of Osiris being absorbed by the roots of the acacia tree. The ancient Egyptians extracted the blood of Osiris from certain species of this tree. Later, in the Christian era, the elixir was also called the blood of Christ. And he continues to explain here, it's unbelievable, man. I took part in such an initiation by my own preparation of this grand elixir. I have prepared this myself carefully and conferred this sacrament and sacred initiation upon myself. The pineal gland naturally produces melatonin, serotonin, and dimethyltryptamine. Science today knows that without dimethyltryptamine or DMT, we would not dream and we could not imagine. Now, I also talked about dimethyltryptamine or DMT and its in inclusion in the what is called the vine of the soul or ayahuasca which is a entheogenic brew that is made in South America by the shamans of South America. We talked about this at length, uh, specifically Pablo Amaringo and his beautiful ayahuasca paintings, okay, paintings he'd done of his visions, ayahuasca visions. So that's what he's talking about here. So DMT or dimethyltryptamine is a key component in both the, uh, the blood of Osiris and in ayahuasca, all right? It's derived from the acacia tree in the case of uh, the Middle East, or it's derived from a several, several vines uh, in the uh, Amazonian forest in South America. Either way, the results are similar. And the experiences that the shaman of the Amazon experience and the Egyptian experience were very intriguing, intriguingly similar, I should say. Uh, and here are some photos that Steve was kind enough to permit me to share with you in his creation of the blood of Osiris, or the stone of antiquity, from the bark of the acacia tree. It is called the Acacia Magistry. Now, Steve details his spiritual journey through his partaking of the blood of Osiris, or the Stone of Antiquity, and you can read about it yourself at this address, adeptinitiates.com slash blood hyphen Osiris hyphen DMT forward slash. So what is the acacia tree? We, we've been talking about uh, Ayusaset and, and Isis and Hathor. What does the, the acacia tree have to do with Osiris? 
Well, according to this really amazing paper entitled The Living Wisdom of Trees, an Introduction to Acacia by Leah Russell, she says here, the original sacred barge of Osiris at the Temple of Thebes was made from acacia. This ancient nature god died every year when the plants withered, only to be reborn in spring. By overcoming death and achieving eternal life, Osiris personified the promise of redemption in the afterlife. The ancient Egyptian spiritual goal was to transcend the boundaries of personality and merge with Osiris. And here's where I think the partaking of the, uh, the elixir would take them to that place, just like the Amazonian shamans. They merge with the plant teachers. In this case, the Egyptians merge with Osiris. Okay, as she continues here. The acacia was the guardian of this promise, for it protected Osiris's mummy while his soul embraced the universe. Inscriptions call him the solitary one in the acacia, and inscribed images show the goddess a mummy sheltered by the tree. So why am I, why am I doing this? Why, am I, why are we talking about this? Why is this important? Well, first of all, if you look at the uh, image of Ayusaset in the acacia tree, uh, you'll notice that her skin is depicted as being green. Interestingly, Osiris is typically presented to us having green skin. Why? Why does Osiris have green skin? Well, he's the god of rebirth, okay, of resurrection, right? The tree, nature, all those things represent life, okay? So I think it's an interesting parallel that Osiris and Ayusaset are both, both have green skin. So I think I'm on the right track. I mean, I don't want to look any more foolish than nature had intended. So I think I think I'm actually I think I'm actually on the right track here. Uh, obviously, Steve Kalik got his recipe for the blood of Osiris from something, right? He got it from he got it from the ancient texts of the Egyptians. So obviously, at least I believe, I fervently believe, they were using this in their ceremonies. Why were they using this? They were using this to raise their consciousness, okay, to turn lead into gold. Right, the metaphor. That's what they were doing. They were they were wanted to return to unity, to God, all right, to the gods, to Osiris, to merge with Osiris. Just like the shaman in the Amazon use ayahuasca to meet with the plant teachers to tell them how to heal people. Okay, they're healers. So I think it's so important in the and to understand that the use of these entheogens in ancient rituals and current rituals, as in ayahuasca has to do with the raising of our consciousness, right? To move beyond where we are now, to raise our consciousness, to become one with unity, okay? So a couple of things. Thank you, Steve Kalik, for sharing this incredible experience with us. I mean, we are so grateful that you've, you've had the courage to talk about this and ex your exploration of, of spiritual consciousness. Thank you, Steve, you are most awesome. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for subscribing. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. You have nothing to lose. It doesn't cost anything, right? I'm not charging anything for this, right? And you just might learn something, right? We're, we're exploring this together. I'm learning every time I do a video, I learn so much. And I, and I want to I wanna take you with me on this hermetic journey. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe and all that stuff. And I will see you next time. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Remember, uh, uh, episode four... <laughs> The fourth video in the series in Egypt is upcoming. I'm working on it. So stay tuned for that. All right. That'll be the next video. Thanks for watching and be well. See you soon.